All right, guys. So I got a few minutes before I gotta go to work tonight. I'm gonna reach over and grab five random movies and talk about or review them or discuss them. So it's gonna be reviewing five random movies from my Blu-ray shelves. I'm gonna close my eyes and go over there and we're just gonna do it. It could be something I've talked about before, but it could be something I've never talked about. But uh, what the hell, spontaneity is the name of the game on this channel, so let's go. All right, my eyes are closed. Let's go in the top shelf. Where are we going? Where are we going? I'm doing my best right now because my eyes are shut. Oh, yes. Okay, road games, dude. Funny story is when I heard about this movie, I did not grab it right away. I was like, um, you know, I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't scream my kind of thing. This is probably one of my favorite. It probably is. At least top five. I would say top three of Jamie Lee Curtis movies for me. Stacey Keach and Jamie Lee Curtis here in Road Games. What a cool kind of like a murder mystery film. Richard Franklin, too. He's such a good director. Uh, I, I was cool to hear that uh, Quentin Tarantino is a big Richard Franklin fan. So that was neat. Uh, this is a, just a good, awesome movie from Scream Factory. Uh, Studio Canal released uh, as well. This game, this movie, Road Games, is so good. Stacey Keach is an 18-wheeler driver, and Jamie Lee Curtis hops on board. She's not even in the entire movie. She kind of jumps in about 25, 30 minutes in. Maybe that's a little exaggerated, but it feels like it anyway. But he carries the movie. He is fantastic. This is a great movie. Uh, this was post-Terror Train and things like that. So, uh, absolute recommend for me. I did not expect to love this film, and it ended up becoming one of my favorites. So, Road Games is... A home run for me. So let's kind of do over here. Eyes are closed again. Boom. Ow. Son of a gun. Here we go. Oh, Nosferatu, the vampire. Klaus Kinski, Isabella Ajani, and Bruno Ganz. Um, so let's say the good things about this movie. I, I bought this with the intentions to review it. This is 1979, came out the same year. Is the 1979 Dracula, which I love. Did not ever talk about this movie. Why is that? Well, I find it to be a little of a bore. Uh, visually, some great stuff. When Renfield gets to the castle, it's magic. It's great. Uh, it just moves. It feels very slow. I, I think that 92's Dracula did a much better job at uh, holding the attention span of the average viewer. This one is just more... I like, I like how uh, Tom McLaughlin, the director of Part 6 of Friday the 13th, said, To me, there's movies and there's films. Films have a certain feel, but movies are what are, are like for the average viewer. The average person, the feel of a movie is what, you know... I, I just like the terminology, even though it's like kind of like a... It's a made-up thing he's kind of expressing, because they're the same thing. But movies are more for the masses, and films are more for you know, film buffs kind of thing, the terms. I like that. I would call this a film, not a movie. Uh, Klaus Kinski is great, as always. He's just bizarre. Klaus Kinski is just such a performer. I need to get uh, Nosferatu in Venice just for, to see it. I think, uh, Vest not Vestron, um, I think Severn put that out. So I, I like this movie. I'd give it a, I'd give it a relative thumbs up, but I would certainly go towards Dracula 1979 without question. All right, this is number three. Let's go right there. Oh, we just had a birthday for this, The Fog. This one is great to me. I, I'm always going to be a big proponent of The Fog. This is one of those charming little ghost stories. I love the nice, touching, charming feel of this. The score is at least top five from Johnny. I mean, it really is. I think the score is impeccable. You'll hear a lot of the same motifs that Johnny did. He loves taking a sequence, a melody, and then and then repeating it in basically different keys. Bum 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 bum, and then it gets lower. Dun 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 dun. It's brilliant. His music for this one is quite frankly remarkable. I've seen people say this is in fact his best score. And I wouldn't really even argue that. While I do think that Halloween is his best score, this is certainly his number two to me. 
Great film. I love The Fog with a passion. Happy birthday to The Fog. All right, number three. Let's kind of veer to our right a little bit. Boom. What do we got here? You know what? I'm so glad that I picked this Firestarter, guys. So this is top five Stephen King for me. I really I really think so. There is the new one coming out. I just saw on Spotify, too. I'm going to listen to it tonight. John Carpenter is doing the music for the new Firestarter movie. Uh, why are they remaking Firestarter again? I don't know. But anyway, I got to listen to the music. And it, the cool thing, it's kind of full circle. Him doing, him doing the music for this uh, for the new movie is, if you didn't know, he was supposed to direct Firestarter. Because of the lack of success on his Universal movie fronts, he got booted from this movie. Uh, which is a shame, but the guy who did this movie, his name is Mark Lester. It, it, it all worked out great. One thing I got to say about this movie that is fantastic is the great George C. Scott is in here. And he is just remarkable. Uh, I love Firestarter. I did not think that this movie was going to be half as good as I thought it was. And end up exceeding my expectations. Easily top five Stephen King movies for me. Adore Firestarter with a passion. Let's go over here. So this is number... That was number three. This is number... Four. Oh my god. Doom Asylum. Are you kidding me? This is... Uh, excuse me. This comes out of like the post... I say post. I, the, 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 this was during the Nightmare on Elm Street craze when Nightmare on Elm Street films were just bigger than ever and, and took over pop culture. This feels very much like a nightmare type film. It's not a, it's a sleep and dream film. It's actually quite insane. This this movie is special because it, it, it showcases the worst band performance of all time. They did not want to spend the mo money to uh, actually get a band and have music done. So they literally just made noise and passed off as a band. It's, qu it's quite honestly remarkable to see. But the killer in here is pretty disgusting looking, and this movie is very funny, but the kills are great. It's got that 80s charm, man, just pure 80s slasher charm. It's uh, something else, so I got to put over Doom Asylum. I reviewed this on my channel. Type in uh, C Christian, just type in CHH Doom Asylum or Christian Hanna Doom Asylum. That review will come right up, and you'll see it. I gave a pretty good review for that, so definitely check that out. All right. So let's go over here. Actually, let's go in the middle somewhere. This is the last one. Where are we going? Let's go right. Boom. An American Werewolf in London. Look at this steelbook. I'm actually not a big fan of the steelbook, quite frankly. Uh, but what can I say? You know what? We can't do this. How about this? Amazing film. One of the greatest werewolf films ever. Let's just cheat. Let's cheat. Let's talk about one more movie. Uh, how about this? Let's talk about this. Wes Craven's Swamp Thing uh, with Adrian Barbeau. I love this movie. I love, love, love the Swamp Thing. I uh, I gotta be honest with you, though. I think I like Return to Swamp Thing even more, the Jim Wynorski film. What a great, what a great film. It is a Jim Wynorski classic. Classic. But this one's good. A lot of people I know haven't seen this movie yet. This is a Wes Craven film. Swamp Thing. Uh, Adrian Barbeau is lovely in this movie. The creature looks great. This is a, you know, it's, it's a horror film, but it also kind of has like this kind of a sci-fi feel, but it, it also leverages way more towards horror. And look at that art. Are you kidding me? That is beautiful. I don't know if this is out of print or not. You'll have to excuse me. If it is, maybe they'll have some Spanish bootlegs on Amazon, but that usually look pretty good, so... Uh, but what I can say is I love this film. It's not one of Wes Craven's best, but it's one of those pretty good. He has a, Wes has a large, pretty good movie tier, and Swamp Thing is certainly one of them. Now, 88 Films put this out of your region free, and I think they actually show Adrian's chesticles in there for all you horn dogs. Um, I don't own that. Uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't mind grabbing it because 88 Films is a great company. I like getting. I got. I got some over there. You see that stash of red. But uh, I have the American release of Swamp Thing. It's good stuff. So that is reviewing five random movies on my shelves, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. That was fun. Um, I'd love to do that again if you guys were into it. So thank you for watching this video. Just a quick impromptu video. But, you know, usually these are more fun and more engaging with the audience anyway. So I appreciate you guys. Love you. We'll see you very, very, very soon. <laughs>